we fostered some seriously, seriously unhealthy mentalities in this country, and there are multiple. We'll try to cover as many of them as we possibly can, but the cops are the enemy, the masking, what we're doing to kids, we're going over all that tonight on I'm Right. Rhetoric. What is rhetoric? You hear the word a lot, right? What is, what does it mean though? That's just rhetoric, that's campaign rhetoric. That's Democrat rhetoric, that's Republican rhetoric. Well, here's the thing. Rhetoric is just the things people are saying. That's all it is, it's not more complicated than that. But we as a nation have to understand something. And I feel like a lot of people in this country, not the disgusting communists, they, they hate everything, but a lot of people in this country, they don't realize that rhetoric has a cost. I mean, there's, there's a reason history's monsters, almost all of them, had guys who were specifically in charge of handling the rhetoric to make sure the right story gets told. And the problem is the cost of rhetoric, what the actual cost is, you don't know. It's hard to put an actual number to it. What, was, what did cause this? What did, what did cause that? I will tell you, there is a seriously, seriously unhealthy rhetoric that has been spread around this country for a year now. It unquestionably has cost the lives of many. In the future, it will cost the lives of more. What is that rhetoric? What is the mentality that rhetoric has, has caused? Well, here. I have a right to and record the police when they're harassing me. By all means, but you can't do it while you're driving. I was, I can, I wasn't, doesn't texting or none of that. Do you have, and you had that you picture? scared me and made me think you were going to murder me. Okay, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, you're, that's not just a feeling, you're a murderer. Okay. Can you zoom in on that for me, Sure. Jay? Thank you. And I'm perfectly legal and I'm a teacher so oh. there congratulations murderer. you're a murderer what's your last name I can't see that there well if here you, you stop, go murderer. stop shaking zoom in on that for no, me no because right? you're scaring me oh, the, you're threatening to kill me and my son all you need to do is, is your signature he's only citing you for using your cell phone while you're driving that's it there you go ma'am sign inside for the red box a, right there. for him being a Mexican racist what is that name Gasso. it's on the citation ma'am here you go Mexican racist you're always going to be a Mexican. You'll never be white. You know that, right? You'll never be white, which is what you really want to be. You there you go, be dear. White. Thank Have you, a good day. You want to be white so bad. That's healthy, right? That teacher. Oh, by the way, quick side note. I'm not going to go off on this. Get your kids out of government schools. But anyway, that's, that's a healthy mentality we fostered, right? You see it all the time on television. And as you well know, I'm not the guy who comes on here after every police shooting and takes the cop's side and the crook deserve to die. I, I'm the only person in the United States of America who waits, watches, gathers all the facts, and then makes a judgment call on it. But how many police videos have you seen where somebody's just acting in a way you can tell at the beginning of the video, you can tell right away, you find yourself, at least I do, looking at the person doing something stupid and saying stop you're gonna get killed wait what do you stop yeah, they're gonna kill you stop stop but they don't stop why because of the rhetoric that has been passed around this country cops are the enemy cops are the problem cops are the enemy cops are the problem there's a price to be paid for it and it's not just cops and criminals and and crazy teachers who get pulled over this this goes across the board the masking thing the masking thing has gotten so bizarre, and I don't care if you wear a mask. You wear one or don't wear one, that's, that's up to you. This thing has become some kind of cult. All the COVID lockdowns, masks, shutting down school, plexiglass, vaccinate, don't vaccinate, it's become an absurd obsession for people. I'll never understand. It completely rules people's lives. Joe Biden was just down doing one of the stupid things presidents have to do. Let's go meet some school kids and act like you care about them. I mean, they're asking the kids how they're doing. The kids are telling you. How did you like doing this from home? Difficult with all the glitches, but it, it ended up being pretty good. I definitely prefer it this way, though. Mrs. Biden, Dr. Biden's a teacher, too. She teaches full time. I teach English. So what did you, what comment would you like to make? What? 
What would you like to say? Um, I didn't like Marshall. You didn't? No. It was no. terrible. Sometimes, like, if, um, if she, like, wouldn't let us, like, like, if we were, like, really tired, then we could, you know, take a little nap. Kids. Kids who we now know, those kids that age, at no risk, none, sitting there with masks on their face be behind plexiglass. Oh, and virtual? Let's not set this aside. Because this virtual learning thing and the stupid masks and plexiglass and everything else, this all came from the rhetoric right off the bat. Oh my gosh, we're all going to die. Somebody find a doctor to, doctor to tell us we're all going to die. Uh, uh, this coronavirus is going to wipe out life on the planet as we know it. And left and right, everybody jumped on that train. Oh my goodness, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. Did you know we're all going to die? Well, a lot of kids lost a year of their lives, an incredibly important year of their lives for that. How'd it go? Well, let's see. In Virginia alone, fa uh, failing grades are up by 83% this year due to virtual learning. Students with disabilities are failing at an, a 111% increase. 111% increase. And we're going to pause there for a minute. What drives me crazy now and has always driven me crazy about the idiotic coronavirus response is who it actually punishes. It's what drove me crazy from the beginning. I know you used to send me hate emails about it. Now you send me emails saying you were wrong. But from day one, I was screaming at people. You guys do realize all the people pushing this panic, telling everybody, run home, hide, lock down, close your restaurant, put on a mask, we can't move until I have 19 vaccinations. Ah! All those people, they were all sitting at home on their phones, getting a paycheck. Or they were in the government, getting a paycheck. Don't you remember? It was very telling early on. Federal government out there pushing things like, close down your gym, because... Of course, now we know that being fat and unhealthy is one of the easiest ways to die of coronavirus. But anyway, close down your gym. Everyone's going to die. And then it came out. The congressional gym was open, and they were all in there pumping on her. Of course. Nobody who pushed this panic, nobody who pushed this rhetoric out there, none of them suffered. I just got a buddy. I just got a text from a friend about two minutes before the show started. I'm going to read it to you here on the air. He walked up to a restaurant, and this sign was on the door today, about an hour ago. Sadly, due to government handouts, no one wants to work anymore. Therefore, we are short-staffed. Please be patient with the staff that did choose to come to work today, and remember to tip your server. They chose to show up and serve you. The damage we have done with this panic, absurd rhetoric, and our responses to it, pass a COVID bill, pay people to stay home, it's unending. The damage is unending. We will pay for this for decades, for decades. We haven't even talked about, and I'm not going to go off on this now, we haven't even talked yet, for a while anyway, about the coming commercial real estate crisis that's on our hands. You see, we have tenants not paying rent. We're telling landlords landlords are not allowed to charge rent. Well, landlords aren't all a bunch of millionaires with unending amounts of money. They have bills that they pay too. They can't pay those bills. This filters down to the lending institutions and we've just kicked this can down the road and kicked this can down the road. But judgment cometh and that right soon. Oh, speaking of teachers, you got kids sitting at home learning from your teacher, right? Well, what are they learning? Here's what they're learning in the Chicago area. You fit in so well with their, you know, the university's philosophy and mission, right? I mean, it's all social justice all day, every day. I get to all talk about all the things I love all the time. All day, every day. All day, all day in the day gig, all, all night in my night classes, when I'm here. Like, I mean, really, I'm living the life over here at the daycare with your kids, night classes with your kids, get your kids out of government schools. And this mask thing, it, the way people talk to other people about the masking, the anti-maskers are not as bad, although there have been some obnoxious ones out there. Take your mask off. Oh, who cares if someone wears a mask? But these people who are obsessed with wearing one and obsessed with making you wear one, this has become some sort of signal of virtue for people. 
I saw a story the other day where they were interviewing D.C. DC Democrats and they were fully vaccinated yet still wearing the mask just so people didn't think they were Republicans. It's so bizarre and unhealthy. It is it is it is taught people somehow this absurd rhetoric has told people you can speak to your fellow American any way you want. Because if they don't have a mask on, they must be some kind of anti-mask heretic. Let me look down on you and scold you. Look at this poor girl. Look at this poor girl who got scolded in New York. bunch of grown men sitting there screaming at a girl to put on her mask. What has this thing turned us into? I wasn't planning on saying this, but I will tell you, seeing that video again, I'm a little ashamed. I am. I love this country. I'm a little ashamed at what this thing has turned some of us into. Thankfully, not all of us, but that's, that's profoundly embarrassing. We have one Massachusetts town. Get this. This is a headline. Massachusetts town rejects CDC, says it will keep outdoor mask mandate in place. This has become a sickness. Oh, and you know how I've been telling you to balkanize? Get out of your blue area. Get to a red area and make it a lot redder. Go. Go. Go to a run for school board, take it over, make sure they're teaching your values. Run for city council, mayor, run for state house, state senate. You move somewhere and become an activist and get involved. I want you to understand something before I play this video of Heavy D for you here. I've had the opportunity, I've been forced to for the most part, to travel quite a bit over the last year. Around the country, just doing various things for my job. The difference between where I live rural Texas and how the people in these crazy leftist urban hellholes live for the last year is drastic. Drastic. We were, we were having neighborhood parties a month into COVID. Gigantic neighborhood block parties. Nobody got sick. We went out through horseshoes, had a couple beers, ate pizza, the kids played, living normal life. Some of you out there watching me right now as we speak, you're still not living normal life. Get out and get to a place where you can be free again. Maybe Florida? I'll also sign an executive order pursuant to that bill uh, invalidating all remaining local emergency COVID orders effective on July 1st. Uh, but then to bridge the gap between then and now, I'm going to suspend uh, under my executive power the local uh, emergency orders um, as it relates to COVID. Um, I think that's the evidence-based thing to do. I think the fact that I think I think folks that are saying that they need to be policing people at this point, if you're saying that, you really are saying you don't believe in the vaccines. I talked to somebody today on my radio show, Jesse Kelly show. It's on every day. I talked to somebody on my radio show today. You know what they told me? This is a person who lives in New York City. They told me they took the whole family down to Florida. Everyone's vacationing in Texas and Florida right now. And they said at one point in time, the kids were looking around at everybody smiling, happy, full restaurants, no masks on, walking around free. Kid looked at her and said, why can't we move here, mom? Get out. I have lived all over this country. Red states, blue states, urban, rural, I am telling you for a fact, life is better when you get to a place where people share your values. If it's at all possible with your job, your family situation, and I realize sometimes it's not, get out. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I'm right. Now let me make you uncomfortable one more time. I am glad you have made the choice. If you have, 
to carry a weapon at all times. Look at the news. It's, 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 it's not hard to find something scary out there. There are You're surrounded by wolves at all times. If you don't believe me, go pull up your state's sex offender registry system. Yours, is, yours, yours has one almost undoubtedly. And put in your area code. You're surrounded by wolves. Carry a weapon. Learn to use it safely. Carry a weapon. If you're carrying a weapon, please tell me you're not carrying it with some stock holster you bought at a big box store. People ask me, well, why do you love Northwest Retention System so much? One, it's made in America. Two, it's custom made. Custom made. When your gear fails you, it always seems to be at the worst time. And when we're talking about a situation like that, which I hope you never run into, but if we do, that's the kind of thing that can cost you or someone you love their life. Go to nwretention.com. Make sure you use the promo code JESSE nwretention.com promo code jesse it'll save you 10 percent. go get custom made american gear we'll be back you know something it gets hard to explain to people when things are safe and peaceful why certain things matter so much I've been struggling with this a lot lately when it comes to the changing of our FBI, our military, our CIA, when it comes to how their priorities are changing. And I'm trying to explain to people the best way humanly possible, you don't understand. This can cost lives by the thousand. You don't understand. And you know how I know this? Because I look at the history of the world. And I look at countries that lost their way when it came to their military priorities, when it came to their spying priorities. And you know how it ends? That story ends with a ship or ships at the bottom of the ocean. That story ends with a city on fire. That's how that story ends. You and I have something in common. Every human being has something in common. You know what that is? Our time, our focus is finite. You only have so much of it. That's the way we are. That's the way human beings are built. When the United States military is shutting itself down to find white supremacy, that's not a military with its priorities straight. When the Central Intelligence Agency, America's spy network, is putting out ads like this, we are in deep trouble. I used to struggle with imposter syndrome, but at 36, I refuse to internalize misguided patriarchal ideas of what a woman can or should be. I am tired of feeling like I'm supposed to apologize for the space I occupy rather than intoxicate people with my effort, my brilliance. I am proud of me, full stop. My parents left everything they knew and loved to expose me to opportunities they never had. Because of them, I stand here today a proud first-generation Latina and officer at CIA. An in, in intersectional patriarchal... And I played you the short version. She goes on to talk about, uh, I'm a cisgender... Uh, I don't even know what that word means. I have a generalized anxiety disorder. You understand that China's spy network wakes up every single day and they spend all day, every day, thinking about one thing, bringing the United States of America to its knees until we beg for mercy. Our Central Intelligence Agency is putting out recruiting videos asking for the next person who's too confused about who they are. Uh, the patriotic of with, with wearing my mask. It's something you can poke fun at now, and we can laugh about it now. Ah, oh, they're ridiculous. That's crazy. I do want you to understand, though, there is always another war coming. The history of the world says that's the case. When that war comes, the advancements, the focus you had in peacetime are oftentimes the difference between you winning and you losing. How'd that work out for Japan? You want to know part of the reason we kicked Japan's rear end so bad in World War II, not just the manufacturing? During peacetime, we had really boned up on our code breaking. We broke their codes. That's how we won the Battle of Midway. We ambushed them there. 
Ask the Japanese Navy at the bottom of the ocean how important it is to have your priorities in line when it comes to spying. Lastly, I'm going to play you this video. It's a change of subject, but it's a, well, this is a six-year-old girl. Are you a boy or are you a girl? I don't know. I don't know who I am. You don't know who you are? Who do you think you are? I feel like I'm a boy. You feel like you're a boy? What makes you think that? Probably going to go ahead and hold back here on what I really want to say. I will just simply say this. A parent who pushes that insanity on their own child, well, that parent should be ashamed to show their face in a civilized country. All right, now. I've talked to you a lot about home title theft before. And I realize just hearing it for me, it may not be landing for you. Well, here's something for you. You don't have to hear it from me. Take it from the guy going to do hard time for decades for it. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's, it's in my name or he would have to get some special document. They would call me, you know. Nobody's calling you. After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that, that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. Yep. That's real. Now you know. Go to HomeTitleLock.com today. That's HomeTitleLock.com. They're out there. They haven't locked up all of them. They haven't locked up a fraction of them. Go sign up today and don't let it happen to you. HomeTitleLock.com. Use the code RADIO. That gets you 30 free days of protection. We'll be back. Before we get to the future of the GOP and whatnot, let us first deal with the elephant of the room, well, elephant in the room, as I talk to my favorite guest, Dave Brad. He's the Dean of Business at Liberty University, former congressman. Okay, what are you wearing and why? <laughs> Hey, this is uh, Dean Dave Bratt, Liberty University. We're graduating our students next week, and today we're taping some of the festivities. We had Tim Tebow in the house, so they told me to oh, look up that's... to snuff. <laughs> okay. All right. Look, as somebody who never really attended a graduation, <laughs> certainly not a college one, uh, if, are things different now? Now, I'm sure you guys are probably doing it right at Liberty, but are things different yeah. in this weird COVID remote learning era, or are things pretty much back to normal for you? Yeah, well, nationally, they're not back to normal. At Liberty, uh, we're, we're getting pretty much back to normal. We had in-person classes. Uh, we're having a huge uh, in-person graduation celebration by schools following all the rules in place. Uh, but it, we, we know how that important that was to parents and, and, the, and the students here. And so we made it happen, even though a lot of schools are not. And so, yeah, we're, we're getting there. I think we're going around the final curve, we pray. We'll, we'll see what unfolds. I guess we'll see what unfolds. All right, I have to play this for you because I figured this probably get your blood up. It certainly got mine up. Here is former President George W. Bush, everybody. I'm still a Republican, proudly be a Republican. I think Republicans uh, uh, will have a, a second chance to govern uh, because I believe that uh, the Biden administration is a uniting factor, and uh, particularly on the fiscal side of things. So, you know, we'll see. It's... Uh, but I know this, that if the Republican Party stands for exclusivity, you know, it used to be country clubs, now evidently it's, it's uh, <laughs> white Anglo-Saxon Protestantism, then it's not going to win anything. Uh, who in their right mind thinks the Republican Party stands for white Anglo-Saxon Protestantism? What is he even talking about? He sounds like some crazy writer for the Rolling Stone. This is a former president of the Republican Party. What's he talking about? 
I, I, I don't know. He must be on a book, book tour or something uh, trying to make a nickel. But the, everything he said was wrong. On the fiscal side of the House, they're adding $6 trillion. So I, I don't know if W lost three zeros or what's going on there. And then on the Anglo-Saxon tradition, I mean, that, that tradition is, along with the Greeks, the first tradition that said itself was not important. It was a non-ego embracing revolution, right? Magna Carta, constitutional government, republics. It, it's the first that said our culture doesn't matter. The individual under God matters. So he, he is just classically mistrained in what the liberal arts tradition and what the Anglo-Saxon legal tradition is all about. It's not about Anglo-Saxons. That's precisely the point, is to not make it about the king and the queen and not about Anglo-Saxons. I don't even know what they are. I could probably define them, in a, you know, if I looked it up again, refresh my memory. Uh, but he, he's just way off, and this is how miseducated our country is. If the president of the United States is making uh, uneducated comments like that, uh, missing the entirety of the philosophical contribution of uh, the Western tradition and the rule of law. I shouldn't say that the, the Anglo-Saxon was the first. The Greeks were actually the first uh, to downplay their Greekness in favor of, of, guess what, human reason. You may have heard of them, George, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. They downplayed the Greeks in order to give us reason. It was a gift. And so uh, I, I, mean, I hope he just had a bad hair day. I, 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 I used to kind of like him personally, but if you're off the rails this much, I'm getting nervous. Uh, Congressman, I'm glad you brought this up because uh, obviously this is much more your wheelhouse than my wheelhouse. But when it comes to higher education, not something <clears throat> I could succeed in, but when it comes to especially America's universities, obviously I'm thrilled Liberty's there. I'm, I'm thrilled colleges like Hills there are there, but you got y'all are the minority are yeah. what we consider to be our elite universities. They're the ones who teach this stuff now. You talk about miseducation. Somebody comes out of Harvard, they're an idiot now. Harvard and Yale and Stanford and, and Columbia and all, and all these universities. And then my problem is not that they're making idiots. It's that those idiots go on to lead our culture. They're in positions yeah. of power throughout the bureaucracy, yeah. throughout the Fortune 500 companies. They are the leaders of society and they're all morons. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you're right, and they, they've, they've set up the logic. I mean, everybody, go read the closing of the American mind, anyone out there interested in the intellectual tradition, uh, for more on uh, the case I just laid out. But, you know, back in the 20s and 30s, the Harvards and the Yales and the Princetons and all the elite universities set out the anthropologists and the sociologists to go out and prove uh, that uh, our culture was the worst. And they went out back when they used to do social science that included data back then, data and hypothesis and science. And uh, they came back and they're scratching their heads and they said, man, I, I, I got to admit the data are not looking good here. It turns out we're the best for human rights. We're the best for women's rights. Uh, we're the best for nutrition. We're the best for uh, treatment of minorities in our political culture. We're the best on civil liberties. Uh, this data is just not looking good. It looks like the, the West is best. By, by all accounts. And so after that, then they had to get to work uh, erasing uh, and, and changing the textbook in the social science. So now they're just crazy studies departments and uh, it's a sad day in academia. Oh, good grief. All right, I do have to, <laughs> Trump, Trump blasted away at somebody. I know you're gonna find that shocking. I did have to read this for you. Heartwarming to read new polls on big shot warmonger Liz Cheney of the great state of Wyoming. She's so low that her only chance would be if vast numbers of people run against her, which hopefully won't happen. They never liked her much, but I say she'll never run in a Wyoming election again. All right, setting aside, it's great to have Trump back out there blasting away at people. The future of the Republican Party, the, the yeah. Trump aside, what is the direction it's going? I say in some ways it's going a healthier direction, some ways it's unhealthier. I don't know that I'm signing on for populism. <clears throat> I am very much signing on for a Republican Party that actually has teeth, though. But what say you? Yeah, I, I, I think you framed it right. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's kind of the internationalist versus, uh, you know, America first. Uh, an easy, easier way to look at it is... Uh, are you pro or anti the swamp in D.C.? That, that's a way most people can understand it immediately. Do you think uh, more action in your life 
they should be directed through the the fiats and dictators in Washington D.C. Or would you rather have less of your life of being directed by Washington D.C.? And amazingly, the folks who are voting for the left, it's not you know, even the Democrat Party, and they're certainly not liberals. I used to be friends with all the liberals, so no problem. Uh, but now the, the left, they, they, they scream about fascism, and fascism, is, by definition, is a total state, and therefore the big state. And so the whole thing is just a mass of confusion. But uh, the, the Republican Party, uh, Trump just showed you the winning pathway through the Midwest states, through Ohio and Wisconsin and Michigan, uh, et cetera. And uh, it, it, it kind of has that path. All you need to do is run against the swamp and against all these environmental and tax policies and crazy educational policies and uh, health policies that all are directed from DC. And so if, if the Republican leadership would ever run against the swamp, they would win uh, overwhelmingly. But unfortunately, our leadership uh, in the Republican party uh, is not leading at all in that direction. They wanna maintain their hands on the, uh, on the cash register and the money. And until they're ready to just go to the people and give up the cash register, we, we will uh, not be united. Well, how could they ever run against the swamp when they are the swamp? In fact, half the people Trump appointed were the swamp. I, I mean, I thought Trump did a great job. His hiring and firing was nothing short of embarrassing. I mean, people have already forgotten the FBI yep. lied to get a warrant to spy on an American citizen, and neither of Trump's useless uh, attorney generals did anything about it. Yeah. No, I, I, I was shocked. We were in the Freedom Caucus uh, just watching our leadership slow walk the president uh, on, on the hiring front. And then they're out of the box. Uh, the left has, you know, 100 initiatives passed in 100 days. Uh, the conservatives had one. We we're going to redo health care, repeal Obamacare, except we didn't repeal Obamacare and uh, did some Medicaid uh, thing instead and called it health care and slow walk the president for the first couple of years. Uh, and so he lost his momentum. They were fighting against uh, the president. And like you say, the, uh, the, the, the deep state, uh, we, we had a corrupt FBI and CIA. By definition, we knew uh, within a month of the president being sworn in, the evidence was already there. They had laid out the trap for the president. And uh, the president was not served well by his legal staff, by uh, justice, who I thought would finally come through in the end, and they, they never did. I was shocked. And so you're right. Uh, I, I, and I, I can't believe Trump kept so many of them on. I, I, I thought he would have fired the whole mass. But it, it is complex up there. Why didn't he? Well, why uh, People wanted this draining of the swamp. And while I have big problems with Trump's spending and whatnot, I do believe that's what he wanted. He certainly got yeah. mired down in it, though. Why? I understand it's hard. Why were his hires so bad? Yeah, well, like, he started listening to some family members and some moderating forces that said, well, you got to, you know, you got to kind of come this way a little bit. You got to give this if you want to get that. And it uh, wasn't true in his case. If he would have went straight to the American people and said, I got to have this for the sake of the country uh, be, to be successful, the American people would have given it to him. Uh, but he started listening to all of these countervailing voices in the head. And uh, it, it is a mess up there. And then, you know, you, well, if you do that, you're going to be mean. And then, you know, come on, dad, you can't be a meanie. You got to do some softy stuff too. And, you know, so I, I, part of it's family. He's, he's loyal to his family. And it, that was tough. Congressman Dave Brad, Dean of Business Liberty University. Thank you so much, sir. You bet. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, I know you just saw the headline coming out. Even Warren Buffett is warning about inflation. We have big problems with inflation. Inflation's coming. Well, gee, I can't imagine why. I, I'm looking at the numbers here of, of money. It, it's astronomical. The money we've printed? Just printed it. Just fired up the printing press and printed it off. Just handing out money to this person and that person. The history of the world says that destroys the value of a dollar. The history of the world. We know that. This is a fact. You need some precious metals. The value of precious metals skyrockets when the value of the dollar goes down. That's why Wells Fargo is calling a 25% increase in the value of gold this year alone. And don't just call anybody. Call Patriot Gold Group. Patriot Gold Group has given me a personal assurance they will take care of my viewers. Make sure you tell them I told you to call. 
Call and diversify yourself. 866-943-0626. That's 866-943-0626. We'll be back. Joining me now, host of the 13-minute news hour and Republican strategist Bobby Everly. Bobby, I want you to look at this video. And, and, and this, this mask thing has gotten so bizarre to me. Watch this. I have just seen horrible things with these masks for the kids. Um, in every school, I have not seen a single child wearing them correctly um, or staff. Um, and I've seen so much, so much... Uh, pain with them and suffering with just on a multifaceted level. We see the kids who are also having anxiety and having, you know, depression in kindergarten and first, second grade that you just don't normally see. Something with like, they'll come in with just stomach aches and crying and having, you know, nausea. I actually had a first grader come to me and say that she felt like something really bad was going to happen and that the, the mask made her feel scared. Bobby, whatever people believe about masks, don't mask, coronavirus, whatever the case may be. I, I, look, okay, if you're in, if you were wrong in the beginning, that's fine. We're now mm -hmm. far enough into this. These kids are not at risk. Why are we doing this to children? Setting aside the anxiety and stuff like that, what are we doing to their mentality? This is disgusting, man. Yeah, this it, it's it's terrible. And what we've seen, like you said, we we've learned along the way, right? We see the data, and we know that as the lockdowns, as everyone was locked down, you know what went up? Drug use and depression and suicides. Now we're talking about little kids. And the other thing about masks, whether you think they work in the short term, obviously surgeons wear them, right? But but they don't wear them all day. No one's expected to exist wearing a mask for your the whole duration you're in school, day in and day out. Plus, we know the science that these kids aren't spreaders and they don't get it. So there's no reason to be doing this. The other day, Joe Biden and uh, his wife were talking to a bunch of kids. They are in plexiglass. They've got masks on all day long. Of course, Biden was talking with his mask, but he's fully vaccinated. So what kind of message does that send? But for the kids, they need to be out there. They need to be playing. They need to have no masks and just be educated. I don't know what the teachers unions think they're doing with this. Maybe they're afraid of lawsuits. I don't know, but it's certainly not following the science. I'm glad you brought up the teachers unions because that was actually going to be my next question. I mm -hmm. understand that now this is a personal opinion. I'm not putting words in Bobby's mouth. I think teachers unions are absolutely disgusting and should be banned from the United States of America, as should the government school system. But I realize most people don't agree with that. However, however, I don't understand the connection between a teacher's union and wanting to not have school. And if you have school, wanting to have all the kids in a plastic bubble, how does that help your communist teacher's union? Right, you know, it's a, it's a good point because if you phrase it like that, the communist teacher's union, obviously they push this agenda. They want their left-wing indoctrination. They want all of that stuff. And we see that they've been getting it over the last couple decades. But this thing about, hey, we're teachers, but we don't want to teach we don't want to be in school. We don't want to do what's best for the kids from a health perspective, from a socialization perspective. It makes absolutely no sense. But these people have a grip. They have a grip on this market. And the studies show, there's a study that just came out, shows that black students, you know, they don't end up committing crimes if they get to go to charter schools, if they have school choice. Yet we want to keep them indoctrinated in these left-wing poor performing schools that now the teachers don't even want people to show up. It's ridiculous, but Jesse, I don't I don't have an exact answer for that because you would think that teachers want to teach and they want to teach in person. Bobby, are we seeing them? Now, it's never going to happen as fast as like yeah. you or I would want, but are we seeing them slowly lose their grip on power over the education system because of COVID? I mean, you surely have a lot of parents out there who aren't exactly bloodthirsty right-wingers like us who are yanking their kids out of public school and putting them somewhere else because they want their kids mm -hmm. getting an education. Isn't that, are they going to emerge weaker from this no matter what? Yeah, I absolutely think so. And it's it's a whole it's the whole array of the left, you know, the big tech, the entertainment, education, people have had enough. COVID just kind of brought it to the surface because remember there were reports when people were starting to do Zoom that, oh, you know what? We don't want your parents to sit in and watch. We don't want them to know what you're teaching your kids. Are you kidding me? 
So those lessons get out. These Zoom calls are recorded, and that's the other thing. Now there's more video evidence of these teachers spewing this left-wing rhetoric. We've got it on tape. We've got the evidence right there. So yeah, I think when people had the choice and start educating at home, that also gave them the opportunity to say, hey, what other options are out there? And I do think it's a move in the right direction, and it is a chipping away of the power of the teachers' union. Bobby, we got a headline here from the New York Post. Opponents of the cri of critical race theory win Texas school board election. Everyone saw South Lake, Texas. Parents stormed in 70 to 30. Critical race theory is gone. I take yeah. this further. I think that it is not enough to ban critical race theory. I think if we had want any chance at taking the country back, we should storm these school boards and make sure they're teaching our values. That's what the communists did for 80, 90, 100 years, and they took over everything. Why shouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. And locally here around the Houston area, I've been involved with a group of folks and we just, we publicized the results Saturday. We had people running for school board position. Everybody thinks about, you know, state rep, state senate, all these other Congress, these positions. We had people running and winning for school board because it's exactly what you said. To get rid of things like critical race theory, to put in our own curriculum that teaches things like patriotism and actual math and science and reading, we need people on the school boards. We need people running the show and pushing it in a conservative direction, not just to protest what's going on with the left, but actually do things in our direction. And we, see, we saw that happening with these local elections as the other one you mentioned too, but man, they are, there's some crazy schools out there. Loudoun County in Virginia, they have people monitoring the ones that are opposed to critical race theory. They monitor their Facebook groups and then try and call them out, try and damage them in some way just because they're speaking out against this bogus curriculum that just makes Americans want to hate each other, hate white people, hate yourself. That's what it's all about. Bobby, isn't this just going to result in America separating even more? Now, which I'm fine with. I've already told everybody to balkanize, get out of your sorry blue state, move to a red one, run for school board and make it redder. So this all works out fine for me. But when I hear things like you just talked about, them threatening yeah. parents for being against it and whatnot, all that tells me is, is, is the people who can, they're going to pack up, they're going to come to places like Houston, they're going to go to places like Florida, and the country's going to keep going this way. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I partially agree with that. I do think, though, that the vast majority of people think like you and me. They're quiet, though, okay. and as conservatives in general, man, we just want people to leave us alone. We want to go do our work. We want to be with our families. We want to go have fun. It's the vocal minority, though. The left knows. They've known and they've known for decades that the way they push their indoctrination is to be involved in government. So they're always going to be running for these positions. We need to fight back and be vocal as well. But I do think we have the numbers. I do think we have the majority. And the vast majority of people believe the way we do. They just want common sense conservative education and not this left-wing bogus curriculum. Oh, I agree, too. I just think people on the right have fallen in love with that silent majority thing way too much without realizing, mm -hmm. yeah, it's because you're silent is why you've had your teeth kicked in and you lost your entire culture. Well, I think we yeah. need an entire mentality change on the right and be much more aggressive and play offense a lot more. Yeah, man, you're, you're absolutely right. And that was one of the reasons that President Trump was so popular. Is that, yeah. and, and this one of the reasons why from the very beginning, he was one of two that I was supporting for president is because I saw a person that was actually going to take it to the left, take it to the media, call them out. And what has it done? It's inspired others to do the same. And again, it goes back to your, you're talking about the teachers union. People are now emboldened. They're a little bit braver to not be silent anymore and to speak out. So yeah, when I said silent majority, I was talking more about the numbers because you actually nailed it. We do need to speak out. If we're silent, it really doesn't matter for the majority. We need to start speaking out, fighting back. And Trump kind of gave us that initial kick to say, hey, you need courage, you need bravery to get out there and do it. Bobby, we have to talk about this picture of the Bidens and the Carters. Uh, by the way, I just want to just say this right off the bat. I wish the Carters well. Uh, they are in their 90s now. Obviously, political people that I'm not huge fans of. But as always, we want our former presidents and all our older people to have long, happy lives. But why does Joe Biden wear a mask when he talks to school children hiding behind plexiglass and not when he's sitting with two people who were born in the Stone Age and are about to die from 
COVID if they get it. <laughs> just there, there is so much wrong with that picture. I mean, you, you just see it. I mean, the, the perspective, I mean, Joe Biden looks like a ventriloquist. He looks like a <laughs> ventriloquist right there. And he's, and he's got his person that's about to start talking with Rosalind Carter. But the thing with the mask, it's just, it's just nuts because when they left that facility to walk outside, they put their masks on. They are there, a bunch of senior citizens with no masks. I mean, that violates Joe Biden's own rules, but then those rules are bogus anyway because he's fully vaccinated. He shouldn't need a mask. So the consistency, they put it on outside, take it off oh, around 90-year-olds. I mean, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Bobby Everly, everybody. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. All right. Take it easy. All right. It's May the 4th. So we're going to have to do a thing. Hang on. If there is one force in this country that may be more powerful than the communists, it's these Star Wars nerds. My word, they're, they're just like an obsession with this movie. And let's be clear about something. The movies were good. Some of them were garbage. They weren't life-changing things. If you're a grown man, and you're showing up at the premiere of a movie in costume for any reason, it is time to question your life. And maybe go get a date, because you haven't been on one, sir. But I realize it is May the 4th, and unless we play you something Star Wars related, we'll likely have Wookiees outside the door tomorrow protesting the studio. So, take it away. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. You are the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the city, not join them. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. I hate you! You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you! Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know why that made me laugh. All right. Let's see you tomorrow.